What's up y'all and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be talking about decoys and we're getting started right now. Welcome back to the channel and like I said today we're going to be talking about decoys but most importantly what we're going to be talking about is you and your selection process when you get ready to buy a set of decoys. So let's dive in. Now one thing that seems to be a really big deal right now in the decoy market and decoy industry that all the brands seem to be kind of jumping on the bandwagon with and that is decoy head position. Now, in my opinion, and this is strictly my opinion, the decoy head position really doesn't matter. Not to the ducks. I don't think so. Um, I actually did an Instagram question on my story asking some questions about some decoys. I also did the same thing on YouTube. If you commented on that post, I really appreciate it. But there were some things that kept coming up. People kept saying head position, realism, head position, realism, weight, brand, price, and um, those are all great, great points. But the one that really just kind of had me scratching my head was the head position. Because I've looked at drone footage, tons of it. And it's, it's out there, it's on the internet, it's on YouTube, it's on Instagram Reels, it's all over Instagram. You can go to Oki Decoys on um, Instagram, check out that. They've got tons and tons of drone footage. Go check that out, out on Instagram and you can really see what the ducks see from above looking down on, on live ducks. And the one thing that stands out to me is you can't tell what that head's doing. There's only two things you can tell. You can tell one, that it has a head and two, if it's stuck out. So, you know, and, and dive bomb, and I have some dive bomb F1 mallards right here. Dive bomb has this really high upright head position, which I like. I think it looks really good. It's a really prone searching kind of look, alert position. I like that. And from above, a bird's eye view of it, that's what it's gonna look like, you know? But can you tell that decoy's alert? Not really. Can you, does it look like it's got its head tucked down in a resting position? You can't tell, because you're above it, right? You've got a bird's eye view. But if you take this decoy, which is the, the feeder, has its neck extended like it's kind of browsing, searching, you know, skimming the water for little invertebrates and things like that. Now you, you compare a bird's eye view of this decoy, well you can tell that that bird has its head extended, right? <coughs> and there's actually some other decoy brands out there who have like their heads kind of picked up like it's drinking water or something, I don't know, maybe gurgling mouthwash, <laughs> I don't know what the heads do it looks like i've seen you we've all seen ducks at a farm or on a pond a city pond something like that you know they they get a little water and they pick their head up like they're swallowing i'm sure that's what the duck is supposed to be you know simulating but um i really just think when it comes to head position the only two that really is noticeable is a feeder like this or browser whatever you want to call it i've heard it called both and just an upright head position. I mean, because like I said, a bird's eye view, you can't tell what that head is doing. Now, if a bird is coming from the side at a 90 degree angle, well, yeah, now he can tell that that, dirt, that duck is um, alert. He's looking. <clears throat> this one, he can tell he's got his head stretched out feeding. So, you know, that's where the head position for an upright really comes into play is from the side. And, you know, like I said, the one, I've seen them with their heads picked up. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just going to leave it at that. I think it's kind of silly. So all that's doing is, is selling you the decoy. Oh, look at these heads. I can't believe this looks so real. Because the bird really, I don't think, can notice it. I think he notices a head stuck out 
and an upright head and that's about it but <clears throat> that's my opinion I'd love to hear your opinion so please drop it in the comments below one other comment that kept coming up in the decoy post on Instagram and on YouTube was price and I, I completely understand that because if you're a dry field hunter or if you're a rice field hunter well you're gonna have a huge spread well obviously you're not gonna go buy the most expensive decoys on the market you know cheaper is better in a situation like that you know obviously so you know in that situation hey go down to your local academy sports and pick up just some of their decoys you know or some maybe some cheap flambos something like that but this right here is actually the game winner brand of decoy that I got from Academy and you know obviously it's the blue wing teal hen but um I really really like these decoys and here's what I like about them they're extremely lightweight they're very soft and pliable which is something that I like the best thing about these decoys is they're extremely cheap you know they were like 20 bucks for these decoys so I really really like that when it comes to my blue wing teal decoys because if you're an early season teal hunter like myself some state some states don't have or recognize the early teal season but here in Alabama we do we have one and if you've ever shot teal you know they are low low flying birds when they when they come down they fly around and they swoop down over your decoys or you shoot them when they're decoying well the decoys tend to get shot quite a bit and because the blue wing teal decoys get shot a good bit I did branch out this past season and I wanted to add to my blue wing teal spread and I actually picked up some of the lifetime decoys which you know they're foam they're made out of like the same material little crop sandals or coasters or whatever you want to call those shoes are you know they're um the lifetime decoy prides itself as being indestructible you can cut it in half and it's still going to float you're not going to sink this decoy um, I have had some issues with the lifetime decoys, um, like this one here. The paint is coming off. I don't know if you can really tell that on camera, and I got it hung up, so I'm not going to detach it. But I have had some paint issues with the lifetime decoys. But the one thing, well, the two things that I really dislike the most about lifetime decoys is this. And I'm going to catch some grief over this from some people, and that's fine. Hey, this is just my opinion, my perspective the issues I've had and why I don't like it. So here we go. The decoy, when it sits in the water, you know, it has this little keel system that's hollow inside the decoy. And you, it gets water up in there. When you pick it up, it drains out from this little slit cut right here in the tail area, which is a cool design. It's awesome. I like that. It doesn't hold water, you know. That's a good thing. The problem with that is when you're picking up your decoys, you know, in Texas rigs, you know, most people, they take the little hook and they take it in the carabiner and they drag them behind them as they're picking up the decoys. The problem with the lifetime decoys is this right here, this decoy sucks up that water. And even though it's flowing, coming out the back as you're pulling it, it gets heavy. So I don't like that. It's dragging dead weight. I don't like that. The second thing I don't like about it, even though this decoy is made out of foam and is extremely lightweight, it doesn't move very well. And I think it's because of the way that it sits in the water. It has a little bit of suction to the water when it sits down in there because it's got water up inside of it for the most part. So it takes a pretty good wind to get them moving. No, I like, I, in my opinion, I prefer the lightest decoy possible because the lighter it is, the less little bit of breeze it's gonna take to get that decoy with some lifelike motion on the water. <clears throat> and that is one thing I do achieve with the Game Winner brand of the Blue Wing Teal Decoys. This thing weighs nothing. So very, very little breeze gets this thing moving. And I don't know what it is about it, but everybody knows, you know, in the summertime, the wind like doesn't seem to blow, or at least down here in the south anyway. You Midwestern and North guys, can't speak for you up there in Prairie Country, but down here in the south in the woods, the wind don't blow much in the summertime. It's just hot and miserable. And teal season takes place in September, so it's hot, it's muggy, it's just miserable. Mosquito infested swamp is what it is. And there's little to no wind. So when you get a little bit of wind, it's nice if you can get those decoys moving and you can achieve that with the lightweight game winner brand of decoys. Now, when it comes to my mallard decoys, my bigger duck decoys, as you can see right here, I've already showed you the 
dive bomb F1 mallards, and you know that was the alert or you know prone position decoy. This is the feeder here, but my choice, my personal preference when it comes to mallard decoys, is this one right here, which is the Dakota Packable. I absolutely love these decoys and I'm going to tell you why. Now, before I do that, I'm not trying to sell you this decoy. Don't think that for one minute. I'm just telling you why I like it, okay? Now, here's what I like about this decoy. It is extremely, extremely soft because it is a packable decoy. You can pull this plug out here, collapse this thing down, put the plug back in it, and it will, it will stay collapsed for the most part. It has a flocked head, which you can get in just about any other decoy in the market. It's really not a big deal breaker to me. I don't really don't care if it's flocked or not. The problem with flocking is, like you can see right here, like his ER is turning kind of white. The flocking is rubbing off. It gets messed up. When it's brand new, oh, it looks pristine. It looks real as it gets, but it don't last very long. So if you're going to buy some Dakotas, unless you just want the flocked head packables, go with the painted head. They'll last you longer and they'll look better longer, in my opinion. <clears throat> but this decoy is extremely light. I mean, look at this keel. I mean, this thing just, it's nothing. It's loose. It's basically just a collapsible rubber inflatable decoy, but it's a little thicker than just plain rubber like a beach ball, you know. But it takes very, very, very little wind and this thing will just be cutting up on the water okay see the shape of this decoy see how fine pointed it comes down to wide in the chest sharp in the tail you don't really get that out of a lot of your other decoys see how that dive bomb is is kind of blunted off kind of squared is that a big deal nah not really but it's just things i look at now this dive bomb decoy is a big decoy see how wide it is across the back as well as the Dakota, they are big decoys. They're like 16 and a half, 17 inches long. They are big decoys. But here's the thing. I have seen these on the water. And I have seen these dive bombs on the water. From my personal decoys to been in the woods hunting and seen other people's. The one thing, the number one thing that stands out among any other decoy out there. Now I'm talking Dive Bomb, Dakotas, Greenhead Gear, Avian X, um, the Game Winner brand, the Lifetime decoys. The number one thing that stands out to me the most, I'm riding down the water in the boat or walking through a prairie marsh or whatever it may be and I can see somebody else's spread, I can tell you with about a 98% fact of confidence whether or not they are using a Dakota decoy or not. Because it's hard to really tell it right here by holding it. But these Dakota decoys on the water, with the shape they have, the carving of them. You see this high back right here? See how that head comes down and then it goes really high? These Dakotas look like real ducks sitting on the water. That's what sells me a decoy. Posture. Sculpting of the decoy. These dive bombs are nice. They have, I think they have a, a nice sculptor, but they missed it. They missed it by a little bit. I mean, the object of a decoy is to put it out there and it, for it to look like real ducks on the water so that it will trick and fool real ducks to come in there. Well, in my opinion, strictly my opinion, this one looks real on the water and from the air. Just my opinion. Now, let's talk about another thing, weight. If you're a walk-in hunter like me, then weight is a big, big factor when it comes to my gear and what I'm taking with me. Now, the Dakota Packables, extremely lightweight. I can collapse them down, put the plugs back in them, and they won't completely collapse, you know, to nothing, but you can, you can cram them in a bag if you need to or want to. 
Personally, I just leave mine inflated, throw them over my shoulder or throw them in a sled. They don't weigh that much. Same goes with the um, with the Game Winner brand from Academy. Very lightweight. Throw them over my shoulder, throw them in a the sled. Not that big a deal. Same thing with the Lifetimes. Same thing there. They're really lightweight. Just throw them over your shoulder, throw them in a the sled. If you got two, if you got a dozen, divide them up six and six. Give six to your buddy. You carry the other six. The dive bombs, on the other hand, you might as well be throwing bricks over your shoulder. These and Avian X decoys are the heaviest decoys I've ever picked up in my life. They are heavy. They look nice. The craftsmanship is nice. The quality is nice. But the weight is also nice. It's big. <laughs> so it's a big difference in this decoy and this decoy. It's heavy. It's also hard plastic. You hear that? I can't stand that. But here's somebody walking through a prairie or walking through the timber and you hear them decoys beating against each other. Now the last thing about decoys I want to talk to you about is you. I don't want you to go buy a decoy because I said I like it or I said it moves well or whatever. Don't, don't listen to me. Don't listen to what you see on Instagram. Don't listen to what your buddy says you go to the, to the store and I'm not and I'm saying to the store because shopping online you got a, a picture a picture of what you're looking at you need to in my opinion and this is how particular I am about decoys and this is me I want to put my hands on that decoy I want to see it in person that is how I make my decision I want to see it I want to touch it I want to feel it I want to hold it I want to know. I want to know exactly what I'm getting when I buy that decoy. Not going by a picture online. I'm not going by what an image that I see here on YouTube. Now I might go to YouTube to do some research about a decoy before I go and actually put my eyes on it. But usually, when I get to that point, when I get to the store, I pretty much already have you know an, an idea of what I'm looking for when I get there but I still shop I still want to look at everything out there just that's just me that's just me when it comes to my selection of decoys my preference when it comes to mallard ducks is always going to be the Dakota Packables <clears throat> that's just me I think these dive bombs are very nice decoys but not for the price I think they're pretty high I think they're a little a little bit too high in my opinion they're extremely hard decoys they are durable I think they'll last but they just don't have all the traits that I like and what I look for in a decoy the lifetimes they're nice decoys they're extremely durable paint doesn't seem to hold up and they don't have the movement that I like on a decoy I love the fact that it is virtually indestructible and I love the fact that it is extremely lightweight and I can remove the weights if I want to make it even lighter I love that but it just doesn't do what I want it to do on the water and the Mallard decoys you know right here where they have the gray feathers um, in my opinion the lifetime decoys are a little bit too white a little too bright that's my opinion you may not think so if you do great you know everybody's entitled to their opinion I like one thing you like another that's okay there's nothing wrong with that but these are just a few things to think about. Price, weight, durability, realism. But look, don't get duped into the head position racket that seems to be going on in the decoy market. I think it looks cool. It looks great. Does it really matter? The answer is no. People have been killing ducks over decoys with a single head position for years before anybody ever started adding head positions to a decoy so don't get sold on that don't don't go with a particular brand of decoy because it has all these cool head positions but it weighs five tons you know or it doesn't move very well in the water it's kind of heavy just go out there go to a bass pro shop or you know if you live close to a rogers go to a rogers academy sports places like that Cabela's, 
put your hands on the decoys and make your selection that way. That's, that's what I think you should do. That's my opinion. I would love for you to share your opinion on decoys in the comments below. Let me know what you like and what you look for in a decoy. Everybody's different. So drop a comment down below. Let me know what you look for and what you like in your decoys. And that's all I've got for you this week, guys. So until next time, y'all bust them up.